So in part A of this question, we want to find the amount of work it takes to bring another charge, positive Q, to the fourth corner of this square over here. So we want to bring a positive Q charge to this point over here. So the amount of work required to achieve this is equal to the charge that you're trying to bring in, positive Q, times the potential at this very point over here. So the potential, you can find it by considering the three separate uh, contributions from the three charges that we already have. So we have these three charges. And then we want to find the potential at this very point over here, where we're going to place the charge. So the potential at this very point is equal to the three separate contributions. So we just consider them case by case. So the contribution from the negative Q charge is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon times the charge, negative Q, divided by the distance. And this distance we're given is equal to A. So we're given that this distance is A. And then we do the exact same thing over here. So we just get another one of these terms. So negative Q divided by A. And then we do something similar for this positive Q term. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon, positive Q, divided by the distance. And since this is A, this is A, and this is a square. So we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. This is just the square root of 2 times A. So we just divide this by the distance. And then we can just pull out the common terms to simplify our answer. So we get negative 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2. So this is the potential at this very point. So we want to find the work done, we just multiply it by the charge. So the work done, as you can see from this formula, is equal to q squared divided by 4 pi epsilon a minus 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2. So this is the answer to part a. Now for part b, we want to find the total amount of work to construct this whole configuration now that we've placed this fourth charge at this, uh, at this corner over here. So the formula that David Griffiths gives us to find the total amount of work required to construct a configuration is equal to this formula. So what it means is that if we're going to apply this formula for our situation, is that we're going to take the, this charge times the, so the charge, and then we're going to multiply it by the potential at this very point. And then we're going to take this charge and then multiply it by the potential at this point. And then we're going to take this charge, multiply it by the potential at this point, and so you get the idea. You take this charge and then multiply it by the potential at this very point. And then you just add them up. So the total amount of work required is equal to 1 half. And then now we can, we can consider these case by case. So you can see that in the last video, uh, in the last section, part A, we already found QV for the, uh, for the positive Q corners. So for these two cases over here, the charge times the potential at this point is exactly equal to this answer over here because as you can see, you can just, what we're doing here is essentially just taking the charge multiplying by the potential at this point, which is exactly what this formula is asking for. So immediately we can just take the answer from the last uh, section and then multiply by two because we have two of these corners with a positive Q charge. So first we already know we have this expression over here. So times negative 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2. Now for the negative Q corners, you can see that uh, the potential at these two corners is just the minus of this expression over here. Because if you, if you just uh, consider the potential at this point and at this point, it's exactly the same as what we consider in this question, only except the charges uh, have the signs all flipped. So the V over here at, for the negative Q charges, so the V at this point is just equal to the negative of this expression. So it's just equal to negative Q divided by 4 pi epsilon A, and then negative 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2. So Q times the potential at this point. So Q is negative Q. So we just multiply this whole expression by negative Q. So you see that this negative sign becomes a positive because of the negative sign, and then this becomes Q squared. And then incidentally, you see that this is exactly what we had in the previous video. I mean the previous section. So you see that it doesn't really matter if the, uh, the corner we're considering is negative Q or positive Q. The QV product is always the same. So all we have to do to evaluate this expression is just to take 1 half times 4 times the uh, result from the last section. So instead of 2, we can just replace this factor here by 4 because we have four of these cases that lead to the same QV.
and uh, of course we can just simplify these constants over here so we have q squared divided by 2 pi epsilon a negative 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2 so this is the answer to part b